<coughs> Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. I have been solving math problems for GRE out of this book here. Practicing to take the practice practicing to take the GRE general test, the tenth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 291, quantitative comparison question number 14. The penultimate one, because there are only 15 altogether. This is the second to the last. They are asking you to compare the area of a triangular region that they give you a triangle. Let me draw it here. This is what we are given. And we are asked to find the area of this triangle. So we have area of the triangle versus versus 25. Well, how do we find the area of a triangle? The area of a triangle, as you as you as you know, is one half base times height, one half base times height. So we have to find this base and somehow we have to find this height. Let's, let's, let's see what we can do. In order to make our life easier, I'm going to give these corners, these corners, these are called vertex. For those of you who do not know it, cornex, um, rather, not cornex, rather, the vertex is just a fancy way of saying a corner in mathematical language. So I'm going to christen them. The plural of uh, vertex is vertices. Instead of, instead of just leaving them like that, I'm uh, I, as I said, I'm going to christen them. And for, the, for those of you who do not know, for those of you who do not know what christen means, look it up and learn it. It just means to give somebody something a name, technically, of course. It means to baptize, but I'm going to christen them, I'm going to give them a name, I'm going to call these corners A, B, C, so that it's easier for us to talk about these lines. So somehow we have to figure out the line AC and the line BC. Let's see what we can do here. So here, we have to find the area of the triangle, area of the triangle ABC, versus 25. This is your column A. And this is your column B. Well, there are a few things you should notice. I'm going to erase all of this thing here because we don't need it. I need the room. I'm going to erase this thing and I'm going to erase this formula as well. It's half base times high. So we have to find out the base and we have to find out the half. There are a few things you should notice. First, very first thing we should notice is the fact is that it is a right angle triangle. If it's a right angle triangle, we can use what is known as Pythagorean theorem. I'm not, I was about to write it here, Pythagorean theorem. But I stopped myself because I don't know how to spell it. Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem says that your hypotenuse c squared, right here, equals a squared plus b squared. The square of this side plus the square of that side. So, so, so this thing, the fact that it is 90 degree tells me that we can, we can employ Pythagorean theorem. The second thing you should notice is that because you see the way, the way it stands right now, we know what the hypotenuse is, which is 10. But we have two unknown, A and B. We can't, we can't do anything about it. So the second thing you should notice is that this angle is 45. If this angle is 45, and since this is 90, since the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180, since the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180, angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180, and we told that angle C is 90, and we are told that angle A is 45, I'm making probably too much fuss about nothing. Since this is 90, that means the sum of these two, angle A and angle B, has to be also 90 because 90 plus 90 is 180. And if the sum of A and B is 90 and one of them is 45, the other one also has to be 45. The other one also has to be 45. Now what does that get us? Well, what that tells us, what, what that, what, what that tells us is that we are dealing with an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle. 
Let's see if I can write it. I shouldn't do these things because I do not know how to spell this thing and now I'm stuck. I need I need my electronic dictionary in a hurry. Just give me a second. Oh, I don't have it handy. It's called an isosceles triangle. I, I believe this is how it's spelled. An isosceles triangle is where two sides of a triangle are equal to each other. Here this side, angle AC, the side AC equals the side BC because the opposite angles are equal. That tells me that if I were to call this thing x, then this is also x. So let's put it in here. So AB, which is 10, so 10 squared plus A squared, which is this side right here, which I'm calling x, x squared, plus BC, which is also x, which equals 2x squared, 100 equals 2x squared. If I were to divide both sides by 2, that tells me that x squared equals 50 and that tells me that x is the root of root of 50. Now we, now we are ready to figure out the area of a triangle. Let's do it here. I, I need to erase all of this. Now we are ready to figure out the area of the triangle. The area of the triangle is one half. The area of ABC equals one half. Base, which we found out is root 50 times height, which is also root 50, because they are both x's. Root 50 times root 50 is going to be 50, and half of that is going to be 25, which is what we have in the other column. So this is your area of the area of the triangle, we just found out, is 25, which is same as what we have in the other column. Therefore, the answer is C. That's all. That's it. We are done. That's all it was. I hope my explanation was not too much. It's difficult to do these videos sometimes because when you're dealing with somebody uh, either face to face or even online or on the telephone, it's, it's easy to gauge the person's ability and, 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 and an instructor can adapt his or her uh, teaching based on the need of the client. But here I do not know how much you know, so I sometimes end up explaining which I think is a bit too much because I don't know where you fall in your in your in your ability, in your knowledge of the math, perhaps you have forgotten everything, perhaps it's been many, many moons. Sometimes I get clients who have not seen these things in 10, 20 years in their career. And they want to go back to college to get their master's or doctorate and they need to take the GRE, but they have forgotten these things. You do not do this thing in your daily lives. So one tends to forget. Anyway, enough said. I hope you found it helpful. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, either face-to-face -face tutoring, personal tutoring, or tutoring through through, through internet, through online tutoring that I do through Skype or over the telephone consulting. Anything at all that I can help you with for the GRE preparation, please uh, go to my website at www.prep, P-R-E-P prep, F-O-R-4, GRE.com and send me an email. All right? You will go to the same website if we just type in www.keshwaniprep.com. All right? Thank you.